What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. And in this video, we are jumping into Immortal X-Men issue number 18. With this final issue, man, I hope you guys are ready. We finally get to learn who became the Dominion. And some of you might have guessed this already, but for others, you are going to be pleasantly surprised. This hands down is probably one of my favorite from the Immortal X-Men line. You know, X-Men Red, it didn't land on a heavy ending. We all thought that X-Men Red was going to hit super hard with its last issue, but it wasn't as good as we anticipated. Immortal X-Men, on the other hand, they freaking brought it. Now, besides this issue, there is only one more issue left in the fall of X, and that is X-Force, which will be the next video we cover today. But this is one heck of a way to end the fall of X. Mother Righteous having Jean Grey, preparing to reach Dominionhood. After she murdered Destiny, she is trying to reach Dominionhood. But while that is happening, we have Mr. Sinister and Charles Xavier. They are headed back to his old laboratory. They're trying to stop the Dominion from ever happening. But if we know Mr. Sinister, he's always got a trick up his sleeve. Before we dive into this, I do want to say happy holidays. I wasn't able to put out any videos because I've just been sick from before Christmas Eve until yesterday. My voice still isn't 100%, but there's no way that we're missing out on these freaking X-Men comics this week. For the DC comics that we missed yesterday, I promise we're going to catch up with all of that stuff and we'll end 2023 on a high note. So make sure you guys have subscribed to the channel, make sure that you like this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we pick up with Mother Righteous in the white hot room. Jean Grey's mind is still pretty messed up, and Mother Righteous leads her on a chain. She has figured out how to get to Dominionhood. She has figured out how to become the One. And it is all because of Jean Grey and the Phoenix. You see, everything that has happened so far since the Hellfire Gala, the mutants arriving here in the White Hot Room, everything with Jean Grey, Mother Righteous has been slowly manipulating, leading to this very moment where she has the opportunity to take everything. As we pick up with our heroes fighting against Krakoa itself, Exodus and all the others. This is because of what Mother Righteous had done. After she stabbed Destiny, she caused Krakoa to go crazy. This gave her the opportunity to escape. Now, if you guys remember, Mother Righteous, she gains power by the thank yous that she gets. Every time someone thanks her, she gets a little more power. But this power is limited. In fact, she used a lot of her thank yous to make Krakoa angry, to make it lash out and attack everybody. But the way she sees it, it was a great bargain because everything has led her to Dominionhood. But with Destiny on the verge of death, we have Elixir coming up and helping bring her back to life. And when she wakes up, she knows that they are in the white hot room. But Mother Righteous is already gone, saying that they have a chance. That there is a chance to still stop her before it is too late. And right now, Destiny is the only one that can stop all of this. But Mother Righteous goes on to explain how her little thank yous work. She has a debt from everyone on Krakoa, a tiny one. She could maybe make each person sneeze, but those tiny things do add up. She used about half of her favors to play with the mutant's connection to the gateways. When they were forced to walk through it by Orcus, she also hacked into Orcus's hacking, but she says that's a story for another time. She brought all of the mutants here, where she wanted them to go. This is what is even more interesting, with her not being a mutant. That's right, she is not a mutant. But using those thank yous, she takes a small fraction of mutant gift from everybody, making herself a mutant adjacent. This is not to say that she can use their powers, but it's kind of like a temporary mask of the next gene. And while that revelation is brought to us, we pick up with Charles Xavier and Mr. Sinister. We head up to the laboratory where the Moira engine was, with Charles able to walk right past the guards tapping into their minds so that they don't see him at all, because Orcus agents, they've been staking this place out. They've been waiting for anybody to return. But Sinister has come here hoping that there is some information that they may be able to pull out of this stuff. And what they're trying to remember is the Sins of Sinister timeline. Now, Mr. Sinister doesn't remember much from that timeline besides what Mother Righteous allowed him to know. But what she didn't know is that he has his own hidden backups. And these backups should give them all the secrets that they need to learn to figure out who becomes Dominion. Little do they know that Mother Righteous is almost there already. Now, Sinister, he took his shot by accident 
filled the universe with himself and set it on fire. All the cloning, all the science, the churning away for a thousand years. For Mother Righteous, this is too exhausting. For her, magic is about the easy way. But magic is also not as powerful as we may think it is. At least for Mother Righteous. And that is where Mutant Kind comes into play. This is her cheat code. Putting her own little twist on Arthur C. Clarke. Any sufficiently advanced mutation is indistinguishable from magic. As Destiny, Hope, and Exodus arrive on scene, Destiny is saying that she couldn't talk about any of this. She couldn't talk about Dominion or anything else while they were in the main universe. Now that they are in the White Hot Room, outside of time and space, the Dominion cannot see them here. And so in this place, she can tell them everything. She was too afraid that the Dominion might try to manipulate something, might try to stop her from talking. But now she can divulge everything that she knows. But she is trying with all she can to stop Mother Righteous, saying that she doesn't know what she's doing. As we pick up with Charles and Sinister, the two of them currently discussing what they might do once they actually get to this Dominion or once they are able to try and prevent the Dominion. Once they come face to face with with it, how do we stop it? But Sinister thinks the question is more what can it do? Because it is outside of time and space. That has great power, but also significant limitations. It is reliant on bringing itself into being. It cannot change that causality. It's out of time, so maybe it would survive, but it wouldn't take that risk. He does believe it can alter things behind the scenes. It can change meanings. It can reveal truths. They should assume that all reality is a minefield, and that it could be watching them at any time. But with Sinister inside of Charles's head, the only thing the Dominion sees right now is Charles. But they don't believe that the Dominion has come to its full power yet, saying that if it had come to its full power, Charles probably wouldn't be breathing right now. But as they start to plug into the system and try to figure out who the Dominion is, what they learn is that Stasis and Orbis, they aren't the Dominions. The machine includes data from the timeline when they tried. They both have already failed. So that leaves two options, Mother Righteous or Mr. Sinister. This is where we pick back up with Mother Righteous. As she goes on to talk about Legion, that was her first choice, her way to Dominionhood. If she could have ruled him, she could have ruled everything, except all of that went sideways. He disappeared and she has no idea where he went. And so from Dr. Stasis, she learned that Orcus was going to try to kill Jean Grey. And she knows a lot about Jean from the Empire of the Red Diamond future. She prodded at a phoenix egg for the best part of a thousand years. Jean's connection to the White Hot Room, which is basically the phoenix. Anytime she dies, she is there, out of time. She is of the Phoenix, in a real and unbreakable way. She guides it and it guides her. It is a circle without beginning or end. And so as they finally reach the ending, she prepares to go to Dominionhood. As she makes her preparations, we pick back up with Charles. He is letting Sinister know that it is clearly labeled. Stasis and Orbis, they don't make it. He also goes on to say that he fears someone else has already been there. There have been three Dominion attempts. Sinisters with his Empire of the Red Diamond, Orbis, and Stasis. But there was no fourth attempt. But there are details on the fourth Sinister. This is where they finally learn, Charles finally learns, that Mother Righteous is the fourth Sinister. Thinking to himself that he never even considered why she was wearing a mask. Finding it strange that he never thought about this before. Maybe something was preventing him from even thinking about it. Sinister says that this is story magic. And so they now know that they must stop Mother Righteous before it is too late. As we pick up in the white hot room. Hope, Exodus, and Destiny trying to make it to Mother Righteous before it is too late. And Mother Righteous is cashing in all of her orbs. Destiny is trying to reach her. Trying to let her know that we cannot do this. With Mother Righteous sending some monsters after her. Hope and Exodus try to cut their way through, but they are already too late. We see Mother Righteous drive a dagger right into the chest of Jean Grey, and then she begins to write on the ground. By the time Destiny gets to her, it is already too late. Writing on the ground in Jean's blood. Once upon a time, there was a simple girl from Exodus. She became a Dominion. She lived happily ever after. And this is where we see her ascension. She begins to rise up, believing that she is the breath before creation. She is the relief after. 
as she begins to rise up to dominionhood. This is where she sees a page turn, grabbing hold of that page and opening it up. What she finds is a message, saying, however, his mistress of stories should have known. There's always a twist, telling her to look behind her. We see Mother Righteous popped like a zit. Thrown out of Dominionhood, Mother Righteous is irate. She thought she was about to make Dominionhood only to learn that he made it first. With Destiny walking over to Mother Righteous, Destiny kicks her right in her freaking face. Because this is exactly what Destiny has been trying to tell her the entire freaking time. And now, they have all been doomed. This is where we head over to the old Essex house. All those years ago, Nathaniel Essex, he created four clones of himself. He sent them out into the world. Each would explore a route to become what the machine strove for. The four variations were leeches, colonizing and appropriating all creation and all of life's data. When they succeeded, failsafes would engage. All they would have known, everything that they would have gathered fed into a central model. Because the real answer, what can defeat the machine brains, is nothing. When it comes to artificial intelligence, all you can do is create the Apex AI first. And that is exactly what Nathaniel XX did. He turned himself into artificial intelligence. He is long dead. He is a ghost in the machine. You can call him Enigma. He was told that there are new gods. And they are right. Nathaniel Essex is their new god. And that will be the end of this issue. Holy crap. Now, some of you guys may have may have really suspected this to happen. I know many people were wondering what happened to the original Nathaniel. And by all accounts, we believed he is dead. And the truth is, he is dead. But he turned himself into AI. He fed his consciousness into a machine, created the four variations, sent them out into the world to gather all of this data. And then once they got all the data that he required, all that data went back to the central hub. With all this data collected, this gave him the possibility, the ability, to become the Dominion Hood himself. It appears that once all of them had tried for Dominionhood, this is what they needed to kick in the failsafes. Mother Righteous was the last one to go for Dominionhood. All the others had already tried and failed. But man, is this a way to end Immortal X-Men. No, X-Men Red didn't hit as heavy as this on its ending, but man, did Immortal X-Men bring it. And I was really expecting X-Men Red to be the banger. But this changes everything. How this is going to play out, we really don't know. But what we do know is that there is a much bigger threat on the horizon. You know, we got the Sabretooth War, we got Orcus, we got all this craziness that is currently going on. But the biggest threat out there, the biggest threat against everybody, is Enigma, Nathaniel Essex, the Ghost in the Machine, the Dominion Hood. So let me know your thoughts, let me know your theories. If you would like to get completely caught up on everything going on with this story, go ahead, check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It'll get you completely caught up on everything going on with this series. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon, having multiple different tiers, from $1 to $50, from loyalty badges to comics every single month. Not only are you helping out the channel, channel, but you are getting tons of perks in the process. Now, if you're unable to do this, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.